year and a half we've been living in our own self-converted sprinter van if you know us you might be thinking that this is our van but that is not the case this is actually my dad's van and we spent about 30 days a few months ago converting it from nothing so today is the day you've all been waiting for we're gonna give you a full tour of Bob's van all right without further ado let's introduce Bob hi I'm Bob and uh, I'm 65 years old uh, I now live in a van that's uh, 60 square feet and what inspired me was my son and his uh, fiance. They've been doing it now for about a year and uh, I, I've seen their community and uh, uh, what life has been like living in a van and it's actually fantastic. So now I've been doing it for, uh, I think about three months now. Before I give you a tour of my van, what I'd like to do is introduce you to my roommates. This is Batty, Batman, and this is Lucy. And finally, we've got the granddaddy of them all, Barkley. <laughs> and by the way, Barkley happens to be 18 years old or 106 human years. <laughs> so, so now, uh, what we would like to do is give you uh, the van, a little tour of the van. So Bob's van is a 2008 Sprinter van, and we chose that because that's the same year and van that we have ourselves. So we're super comfortable with the layout. We thought we'd build something very similar for, for my dad. Um, so you'll notice even a lot of the design aesthetics are really similar to what we already have. This is the uh, captain's uh, area here and uh, this here is uh, what I call the perch or the co-pilots area. <laughs> We've got two co-pilots on staff today, of, of course Batman and Lucy. So I thought that this had to be uh, built up high enough. We can take it apart in two seconds if there's a, uh, a human passenger with us. How I built this is just, it's just a platform. We've got two sides that fold down, right? Uh, so this part comes apart. There's a uh, a bolt here that comes apart and then there's a wire that I've got hooked here to the frame that comes here so that holds it up here it can't fall down and then I can just take it apart put it behind the seat and take this pole out and it's now uh, uh, the seats ready for a human passenger it's always important to keep a nice clean van so I've got my uh, I got a special on uh, some dishwashing detergent so I've got my three pack <laughs> container here and of course it's always important to have a little little treat for the pups it's my kitchen, I think it's five square feet. Thanks to Eamon and Beck and uh, their experience, they have a small sto uh, fridge in their uh, van and uh, they uh, suggested to get a much bigger one. 110 liter, I believe. And uh, a big thanks uh, to D Dometic for ha hooking that up because I love it, it's just fantastic. Which is a two burner stove right here. Works great, I, I have to turn on the uh, fuel but it's not on right now. I, I felt that the counter space uh, being used to living in a house, the counter space was a little tight in my 10 square feet kitchen. So I thought we would build this little thing, which is a um, cutting board, and I could use that if I wasn't cooking anything, I could use that to add to the counter space. So, and that seems to work out very well, and I can uh, cut things up here and make sandwiches or whatever. Propane tank is housed underneath here. This just slides over, covers off the fridge. Rather than have something come out like that, I thought that would be more convenient. I've got a uh, gray water container here, a normal barbecue propane tank, and then we happen to have uh, just the gray water going directly through the van and onto the ground if it's just like dishes or something like that. The water system is, a, I think, a 12 volt pump and it has a switch on here, a safety switch to turn it on and off. You don't, I don't think you want to leave your pump on all the time in case there's a problem with the water. It seems to work well. And then you've got a filtration system here for pure water. So the water filter he's talking about is the same one that we have. It's a two-stage water purification. So it's a carbon and sediment filter. Because you can fill up from any hose, it just adds a little bit of extra purification and safe to drink out of that one. When you live in this environment, you really are grateful for uh, you know for what you have because you, you realize uh, how much waste you go through when you're not living in, in this kind of environment. Because you're bringing all the water in. The first time I was here, I f sort of filled up the sink and realized that I, I just got rid of like a, a hundred pound jug of water that I had to go and get and bring back into the van. So after that, you put a little bit of water in a bowl and you put a little soap in there and you, you end up doing the dishes. And it's a little weird in the beginning, but eventually it's 
becomes normal. We went and got this magnetic knife holder, which is I find fantastic. Uh, you know exactly where your scissors are all the time or your uh, fancy knives. And then this is our cupboard worth of food. We got lots of room here. How about that food. light? Oh yeah, the light. <laughs> Rodeo <laughs> Drive, man. Yeah, we gotta uh, we gotta put a shout out to Eric for that. Eric is. Uh, is a friend of ours that uh, helped us out putting in the electrical stuff. In cupboard lighting, as soon as you open the, uh, the door, there's a little switch right here, and it turns it on automatically, which is super handy. Thank you, Eric. Do you have that? No. You have <laughs> I think you knew the answer to that, Bob, and you're just rubbing it in. I've just got my, uh, my pantry here. Got some oatmeal, some rice, some uh, nuts uh, and uh, uh, spices. Uh, and then some cereal stuff. I've got, uh, you know, one pot and one bowl and one cup. That makes it easy for storage. I think I have more uh, more tea towels than I have bowls and cups. Oh, and also, I, I didn't tell you about my fan here. It's a maxi fan with a remote control. Now this thing, what, if you're not careful, it could zoom you up Scotty. Like, it could like <laughs> suck you right out of the van. I'll just give it a tour here, just turn it on. And then it goes in reverse too, so it could suck the air out of the cabin. On a hot day, you would do that. On a cold day, if you wanted it, uh, if you wanted some air coming to the cabin, you would turn the, turn it around and have the air come in. I'm not really a, a carpenter, but I, you know, I'm willing to try something. So it took me a while, but we finally got this drawer, and it's a cutlery drawer, and it works extremely well. It works for a bachelor. I've got one plate. Uh, actually, I got two plates here, and I think a <laughs> fork and a knife. So that works very well. How it locks into place so it doesn't uh, roll when you turn is I've got a uh, like a male female kind of adapter underneath here. So the male fits into the female and it sort of locks into place. Six LED lights and that's more than enough to light up this cabin and uh, it hardly takes any energy. It's on a dimmer switch and you turn it on, you turn it off and you can get you can set like a romantic uh, mood at night and stuff <laughs> if you're inclined. And the last overhead uh, compartment is, uh, is clothing right now and you can see that I probably need to get that a little more organized. But in time, I'll have that spickety span. Something that I picked up, I think is pretty cool. It's a paper towel thing that doesn't unravel the towels. It's on some kind of suspension here. It clicks, and then you can just take one sheet at a time. And I think it looks neat. It's out of the way, and you've got lots of paper towels. So now we'll jump into a little bit more information about the electrical. So for this van layout, we actually partnered with GoPower. They're a Canadian company based out of BC, but have international shipping to a number of different countries. And the reason why we were so excited about this partnership is because of their customer service. So I'm not a professional when it comes to electrical by any means, but having a company that you can actually pick up the phone and call and ask them questions was incredibly useful. So to run you through what we've done, all of the electrical is actually housed right in here. And this is where the design starts to change a little bit compared to our van. We made this box a little bit bigger and a little bit taller. We fit our 250 amp hours worth of batteries We've got a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter and a charger and display. So uh, I don't think we're gonna be needing to access this because I think it's very reliable. Uh, but if we do, we can just take out these uh, six screws here and this whole panel slides out and we can access the front of it. If you have to just look, put your arm in and make a, do something minor, you can come in from the top. And that's why we built the sort of hinge top. We almost forgot to tell you about the heater because it is still so hot, beautiful here in Canada. Um, but we did install a S-Bar D2 heater. And just like our van, we mounted the heater underneath the passenger seat. So it just blows the hot air directly into the back of the cab. We briefly touched on the uh, electrical cabinet here where we can open it from the top. There's two other sections. One being the laundry, which you can see the laundry is here and it's not cleaned and it's not folded. Next one uh, being the dog compartment, which we must have all the doggy stuff. And that consists of the dog bowls and their food and, uh, and toys and all that kind of stuff. So there's a couple other areas in the van I haven't showed you. Uh, one is uh, really, really important to me as an, and, and to my roommates. And that's, we call that the bat cave. And uh, it's underneath the bed there. It seems to work out very well at night. Everybody sort of scuttles under there and goes to sleep. All right guys, so now we're in the bedroom. There's one other section that we're missing from the mattress. So we actually bought a full double size mattress and we cut it in half. So that extra piece is just at the seamstress. We're getting them to put like a nice uh, cushion on the back. So once that in, that's in place, you'll be able to sit back here a little bit nicer. More like a couch. More like a couch. And then we also designed this uh, van to be able to sleep two people in case you do get a boyfriend or girlfriend. 
whatever you decide. You never know. We actually did allow for the pull-out slot design, very similar to what we did. So he's got this just on locks, and then we broke it into two sections, so it's much easier to do as a single bachelor. And the couch back support will come over here in the daytime, and that's exact, or in the nighttime, and that's 17 inches. So it's, it says a full, a double bed. To finish the this side of the bed, we put a track uh, below and a track above. Put these inexpensive panels on that are slidable. That just you can close them up or open them up however you want. You can even take them all the way out, so you can access whatever you want in the entire underneath the bed. I just got my water and that, that's where my water, we ran a line because of my back, I don't have a great back. We thought Eamon and Beck have their water underneath the sink and it's a little more difficult to bend over and unhook it and put it back in. So because of my back, uh, Eamon had an idea to run the line back here and I can just uh, take the uh, tanks out from the ground position. That was brilliant. I think. And that works fantastic yeah. and I agree that was brilliant. One other thing that we did just like uh, on our build guys, is we did these on quick disconnects. So a lot of people ask us where you can get these. We bought these at Home Depot, um, but we'll also put a link in, in the description below. They're actually just gardening hose quick disconnects. I found a nice little place to have tools. I think that uh, when you have a van, you need your tool bag and uh, there's always little things you need to fix. There's things you need to tighten up and all that kind of stuff. So my tool bag fits here. I got this from uh, the side of the road, which is a great place to pick up some stuff if you want to uh, save some money and uh, you know, be a little creative. So just uh, hook that up on the side, similar to Eamon and Bex. I'm sort of copying everything that they do. Why not? They're good design. And that just comes down like that. And then I have a little thing that will uh, hold it up here. So it'll be up level. And then I can sit here and uh, type or eat breakfast or uh, just use the table as I wish. So I think my dad's biggest concern before he moved into the van was AC. He's a big AC guy. He likes it nice and cool. So how was the summer? Summer was great. And I think the main reason when summer was great is because we have two ways to get the air in and out of the van without AC. So that's a big thing that I think we might actually try and figure out another solution is another air intake. Two vents right in the roof. So this one is just a manual roof vent with screen. There's no fan on that, but that really helps create a nice draft in this space. Now this was a little bit more tricky to configure because we wanted the two vents um, we had to configure the solar around there. So on the roof, we've got 100 watt um, flexible flexible go power solar panels. And those are amazing because we just literally taped them down around this fan and configured yeah, it. There's three of them. There's three of them and it was super easy to connect. We just got the extra connectors yeah. and it was just uh, female, male. This area here is our uh, control panel area and uh, it consists of the S-Bar heater remote control dimmer switch for the uh, LED lights up top. It also houses the fully functional uh, informational uh, go power um, station that tells me that the batteries are 90% charged. Uh, apparently that's as, 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 as high as you can get batteries charged is 90% and it tells me how much voltage is uh, uh, is being used at all, any time and wh where the low voltage is and uh, it gives you everything you really need to know. It's really uh, so easy. And uh, I also have a place to charge my cell phone, um, I guess a USB port, my laptop, and a, um, a DC power outlet here, and um, a, AC, uh, a double AC outlet. So on this end here is the, is the, uh, the control for the inverter, which is that big box here. And what that does is that changes from, uh, uh, turns the electricity into uh, AC, and it also charges the batteries with uh, shore power. So once I plug in shore power, this little box here is charging the batteries. And then if I want to plug in my toaster, it turns the uh, DC power into AC power, it allows me to do my toaster. And I also happen to have, and this is how you control it here, it's real simple. It automatically turns on when you put on shore power, but you can control it here with the on and off switch. And I also have a beautiful recycling box. Well, thank you everyone for uh, touring around my van. I, I hope you enjoyed the tour. So guys, we completed this van in just over 30 days. We have a full build series if you're interested in learning how we actually built the van. And we have lots more information on our channel about van life and that kind of content. We're also linking below all of the items that we purchased um, for Bob's build. So if you guys have any specifics that you're interested in checking out, it'll all be linked below. Also, if you have any specific questions for Bob, 
Um, you know, send him your questions. We in all the know you love Bob, so send him your questions. And we'll try and do another video uh, answering some of those questions. So once again, guys, thanks for sticking around. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video if you like more stuff like this, and we will see you in the next one. Boom. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Bob here. No, it's too big. <laughs> Hey Bob! <laughs> <laughs>